This podcast is brought to you by the word weird. Hey guys, welcome to the Uncommon Cast. We've got a kind of a, well, let's say weird episode today. It's I'm okay of, with that. Yeah, weird's good, and you're going to learn why. Um, so January was kind of a weird month. Had five weeks, and it's been a while since our last podcast. We are going to aim to have a, a podcast out on the first and third week of the month, but it just felt like it's been too long, don't you think, Don? Well... Weeks or months with five weeks are always weird because um, you're kind of left with like this dangling week of like, what do I do with this extra week? And so that's our situation. So we decided let's just have a mini weird podcast to fill the gap. Exactly. And it's very appropriate because we have a weird event coming up on uh, February 10th called Wine and Words and Weirdness. And a friend of ours named CJ Cassiata is coming out. And uh, he's a weird guy. But it's a good weird. It's a good weird, you know? Totally. Yeah. And the interesting thing, um, as we've kind of been learning about CJ, he actually just wrote a book called Get Weird. Um, And we realized that he has been speaking our language because we have been living a weird life for the last few years. Um, It's weird to just tr- to try to describe to other people what it exactly is that we do at Uncommon Good. Um, it's weird to try to do something new that doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, it's weird to do something that you've never done before. Um, and so we live a really weird existence right now. And it's <laughs> been like so cathartic and exciting to uh, read CJ's book, Get Weird, as he kind of illuminates the the weird journey for for us. And the interesting thing is that this word weird is something that's been the vernacular of our family for actually a long time. Hmm. And I want to tell you a little backstory and then we'll will lead into what that has to do with our event. But, um, I raise a weird child. Uh, my son is a weird kid. He, um, he dresses like Steve Irwin, like on a fairly regular basis. (laughs) And that's, he really just likes Steve Irwin a lot. And so I came to this realization as a mom and as a former youth pastor where, um, I didn't want the world to squash his weirdness. Mm -hmm. Like I just had this innate sense that there was something magical about his weirdness. And it's that like fragile thing that we offer to the world um, that can so easily get snatched away from us. And it happens the first time a kid looks at you sideways when you're seven years old and is like, why are you weird? You know, Mm -hmm. and I knew that that was going to happen for my son. And so I um, basically, before that could happen, started teaching him about being weird. And I just decided, like, if I could claim the word weird as something glorious and magical before somebody else told him that it was wrong and broken, then maybe, like, we could call that a win. <laughs> maybe we could, <laughs> maybe we could make it through middle school with his unique weirdness, um, still intact, you know, yeah. because the truth is like this weird thing that, that he has, which I can't define. Right. It's what I know the world is hungry for, mm-hmm. you know, um, the world does not need people who look and act and think just like everybody else. Right. The world craves people who are willing to be different. Um, and so like, that's what I want with all my might. And so we just started claiming this word weird in our family. Um, and we look at weird when people call us weird. Actually, my daughter just told me this the other day. Um, she's like, mom, a girl in class called me weird. And I said, thanks for the compliment. And I was like, (laughs) yes, I have done my job. I'm going to take a nap now. Um, but this, this idea is actually really important to me personally and and into our family. So I'm so excited, but I do have to say this teaching my kids 
to live into their weird is one thing, but actually walking the weird road (laughs) Mm -hmm. is totally different and difficult and lonely actually. Yeah. And it's great. So, so much of what you just said, like, uh, you've shared that story with me before Mm -hmm. and uh, it was before we even read this book. We even knew about this book and, and everything that you just said in, in not so, in not exactly the same words, but the same ideas are found in CJ's book, Get Weird. Right. So it's like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. same brain. It's been like, ah, uh, and, and then like he talks about organizations being weird and stuff like that. And so then, then you, we think about what we're, we're, we're doing with Uncommon Good and we're like, oh my gosh, we're, we're out in the wilderness feeling like we're weird. And here's this person that is just, is just speaking to us and uh, validating uh, us, validating us, and about us. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and so, l- I think I just want to read a couple of quotes yeah, from the book because I think that you guys all see the connection pretty easily. Um, so, we need weirdness to keep the world moving, to help solve its problems, to change our minds and rattle our hearts. More specifically, we need your weirdness. Just like you said about Jonah, like Mm -hmm. it's what the world is craving. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, Whether you're an artist, a teacher, a data processor, an engineer, or a mom, we need you to access and illuminate the sacred weird that Mm -hmm. rests deep within the corners of your soul. It's so good. And CJ talks about this thing called the sacred weird in the book. That's, that's pretty much what we described with Jonah is this thing that makes you who you are, this thing that makes you different from everyone else, Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing that makes you have the ability to see the world in a unique way to solve unique problems. And um, if we can get access to that, because because so often we as adults, life just beats that out of us. And, you know, the, the kid that looks sideways at us and says, why are you weird? Is the adults the, that tell you you're you're not, you you can't accomplish your dreams. That's right. crazy. That's weird. No, you can't be that. You can't do that. That's not normal. <laughs> it's like, man, it's robbing the world of the unique thing yeah. that everybody can bring. And I that truth like became so obvious to me when we used to do middle school ministry. You know, mm-hmm. and there was like this ache in my heart when you would look at these. Um, incredible, wonderful humans, these little, these little pre-humans, you know, they so tragically and desperately wanted to be just like everybody else. Yeah. And on the outside with like a little bit more experience, you could look at them and go, but you're magical. You're so cool because of this weird thing (laughs) that you just did and said. (laughs) Yes. Um, and like that made me crave that for like every human alive. Yeah. Um, And the sad thing is that somewhere along our journey, we got this message like shrink, draw back, pull it in, tuck it away because there's not room in this world for what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so we often settle for like this gluten-free version of ourselves that makes us feel more comfortable. It's way less risky and it makes everybody else around us feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that you use gluten free when, like, you're on a diet that that you can't have gluten. <laughs> <laughs> it's to illuminate a message. I eat lots of delicious foods, okay, <laughs> that lack gluten and keep me from feeling bloated. Yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. We might just cut that out. Um, <laughs> feel free to leave it in. I don't care. <laughs> um, but. We know, like, as we live this, like, less than life, there's something inside of us that longs, knows even that there's something more that can be tapped into that we can, like, draw out of ourselves. But we're, frankly, we're terrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are they going to think? What if I'm not the same as everyone else? What if I can't do it? Yeah. You know? And and he talks about in the book, too, a lot about... uh, you, you you squash this weirdness and it keeps you from doing the things that you really mm-hmm. want to do that you feel pulled to do. Like you're drawn into these, these things, but, but, oh, well, I've got to, I've got to go to college and, and get this degree and do this job 
because that's what's normal or that's what my family expects or that's what um, is going to make me some money. Yeah. And it's, he, it's great because he talks about it like it's a tragedy and I think it is. (laughs) It totally is. And let me say though, like, it's not easy. (laughs) No. Even as somebody that wholeheartedly believes this, um, stepping out into like to claim our weirdness, right? To like stake our flag in our little corner of weird for uncommon good. Um, it's so hard to um not continually hear all those old old voices. Yeah. That keep telling you, you can't do this. You're crazy. Right. It's not gonna work. Why do you think you can make this happen? Mm-hmm. Um and it's all those messages that we have just picked up over the years and like put them in our backpack that we just carry around. Anytime we think that maybe we're willing to take a risk, we use those to remind us that we're, we're crazy. Yeah. That risk is foolish. And then we read things like this, that, that help us connect the dots of what we're trying to do of like bringing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And we look at a quote like this, check it out. When we abandon our weirdness, when we believe the lie that it's better to fit in than to stick out, we get further and further away from on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. But when we bravely decide to embrace our own weirdness, it lets others know they belong just as they are too. Mm. And I love that. I love that because that's so much of what we're trying to do, helping people find belonging Mm. just where they are. Yeah. And, and it makes me think of this quote that I like literally want to get tattooed. I've said it 8,000 times this last two weeks since I heard it. Um, John Acuff said, um, perfectionism's greatest lie is that I'm the only one. Right. And so what I wholeheartedly believe is like the more that those of us who are scared and brave, <laughs> yeah, brave and scared, the more that we can um, kind of show our weird, the more we can pull our weird out. Is that... That's weird. Uh, no, yeah, maybe. I think we can say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> it tells other people like you have a sacred weirdness too that we need, that needs to be accessed. Like we can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another quote from the book that I just read last night that I wasn't planning on reading right now. Go, we, do we're, it. We're, we're out of time, but I'm going to do it anyways. C.S. Lewis, friendship is born at the moment when one man says to another, what? You too? Mm. I thought that no one but myself, dot, dot, dot. Movements are me too machines. Absolutely. Uh, Before me too was a thing, folks, um, somebody famous said, um, the two most powerful words in the English language are me too, Mm -hmm. because of this exact thing. Me too, or I'm with you. We're together in our weirdness. I love it. So good. So folks, we are having this amazing event coming up. And if any of what we just talked about sparked you, if you said, I need to learn more, if there's a tug inside you that says, I, I have this weird inside me that I'm mm-hmm. scared to bring out, but I know it's there and I know the world needs it. Like yeah. hear us telling you the world needs it. Yeah. And we want to see you on February 10th because we want to just talk about this and figure out how to like launch all these weird journeys. Like I can't wait. Totally. To be surrounded by a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. And CJ is like the weirdest expert. He's the weirdness expert. So he's going <laughs> to... He's the weird guru. <laughs> I'm excited for what he has to say. And we're going to be at Urge Common House, which is a sweet venue. We're taking over the whole bowling alley, which is weird. And I love it. Yeah. A bowling alley. <laughs> a bowling alley. Um, it's going to be awesome. So we want to see you all there. Um, you can find us at uncommongoodsd.com slash events and you can sign up right there on our website or find us on social media at uncommongoodsd um, and you, you'll you find links, you'll find uh, events and all kinds of stuff that you can figure out how to get to it. All right, folks, let's get weird. Boom. By the way, Ryan's not here right now. <laughs> if you In case you didn't notice. notice. <laughs> We make it today. Maybe we should have mentioned that at the top. Yeah. It's all good. Bye. Bye.